What's really happening in the real estate market? We're gonna talk about that right now. It's Alex Fung here, Daryl King Team, Remax Hallmark. I just wanna wish you guys Happy New Year. Hope you guys are doing very well. Hope you got to celebrate with your family and friends. And so let's just dive right into the real estate market, okay? So before we do, it's good to put into perspective, how is the real estate market compared to the stock market and the crypto market? And the good thing and the good news I have for you is that it actually outperformed both of those asset classes quite considerably. The stock market actually in the same time period of January 2022 versus January 2023, it actually dropped by over 34%. Okay. And in the crypto market, it actually dropped by 78%. So it's all about perspective here. Okay. How has, how have we done versus the other two? Okay. Now, the other th aspect that we need to consider is the foreign buyer ban okay, introduced by the federal government. So starting January, foreigners are not able to buy homes for up to two years. Okay. And, you know, there's not a lot of comment about that from the government. Okay. But because it's Ontario and based on, you know, there's lots of immigration that happens here, a record breaking. Okay. Last year we have over 400,000 immigrants coming to Canada. Okay. So it's very interesting to see. Um, what's happening okay and the second thing that we need to think about too though is how as an investor and as a foreigner there are ways to get around the foreign buyer ban okay for a begin though i'm not a lawyer or an accountant but based on my interpretation from you know the um the website and what they're they're saying is that you can get around that as a corporation right if the canadian majority holder owns a corporation as a foreigner you can buy a home but the, that leads to the second hurdle, which is the provincial governments where they introduce a 25% foreign buyer tax. So, you know, you may still have to pay that tax. And, you know, as an investor, that might not be the best for you, right? You might look at other provinces, you might want to look at other countries, okay? So it is expected for the market to continue to cool down, okay? So one of the things that we need to look at too is the interest rates. Are they going to go up? Now there's lots of mixed feelings about that. Okay. Desjardins says that it's going to stay the same and TD believes it's going to go up on January 25th. So nobody really knows what's happening. Okay. Um, before, you know, the rate hikes, it was, the interest rates were pretty much free, right? Free was free money. It was 0 0.25. Okay. Now it's about 4.25. So, that's a big increase in such a very short period of time. Okay. Within that year. So are homeowners struggling right now? The ones that purchased homes and you know, in February, you know, March, um, they are feeling the crunch. Okay. They're seeing their mortgage payments, especially if they got a variable rate, they're feeling the pinch. Okay. Now, before we really dive into the numbers here, we need to think about, um, you know, if you've done any home improvements, any upgrades, your location, any lo local amenities, these factors really affect the type of um, the prices on your home. Okay. And so every neighborhood is very unique. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, but let's just get right into it. The state market in Aurora has continued to change very similar to other parts of the province. Okay. So it's 34 transactions versus 50 transactions the month before. Okay. But typically December is slower than November anyways. So that's why I wanted to look at the year before and there was 68 transactions. So there was more transactions in December of 2021 versus November, 2022. Okay. 68 homes. Okay. So that's a 50% decrease on a year to year basis and in February, which is all time highs, about 73 oh, uh, decrease in number of sales. Okay. Um, and even pre pandemic numbers, it was still more than 46 transactions versus 34. In terms of active listings, there are less listings though on a month to month basis. Okay. But what you might want to look at too is the December 2021 figures, which was there's only 19 homes that were for sale. Okay. So, so a year ago, 19 homes versus now 71. So now as a home buyer, there's a lot more um, selection, lots of more room for negotiating in terms of price. Um, in terms of terms as well, I would also add in possibly financing contingencies, you know, also even inspection, if you really want it. There are a lot of people that purchased homes in February, March that were not able to have that ability and luxury to do so because they were facing, you know, 30 offers, 40 offers. And so right now is a really good time to actually start thinking about making uh, a transaction. Okay. I'm making a purchase if you want to live into it too. Okay. So. 
What's interesting to note too is that yes, prices have decreased, okay, but looking at, you know, again, looking at different types of asset classes, the real estate market has still outperformed, you know, the stock market and the crypto markets, okay, even at all time highs, there's a drop of 24% of 1.6 million to 1.23 million, okay, and yet if you still own the home in Aurora, you're pre pandemic, you're still up at least 41%. It's ridiculous, <laughs> right? Um, depending on which side you're on, of course. So in terms of a type of market, it is transitioning more so to a, you know, a bounce market. It's not a buyer's market. Okay. I don't get it when people say it's a buyer's market. Even there's a lot of agents out there saying it's a buyer's market. And, you know, I was selling a home just recently and, you know, an agent actually said that to me. And I just said to him, who else is listed right now? There's no other homes available in this neighborhood. What are you talking about? Right? And so it's really important to notice that it is still a seller's market, but it's heading towards a balanced market. Okay. A balanced market essentially just means anywhere from five to six, you know, and we're comparing the number of transactions and how many homes are available um, on the markets. Okay. So Anything less than five is a seller's market. Anything from six to 12, it's uh, an actual buyer's market. Okay. Now it did take a lot. It is a lot quicker to sell a home on a month to month basis. It took eight, only 18 days versus 30, um, a month before. And if you look at even on a yearly basis of December, 2021, it took 12 days. Okay. But pre pandemic though, it took 32 days. So it's very interesting to note because it's taking it's a lot quicker to sell homes in Aurora now than it was pre pandemic. Okay. So let's look at the detached homes, right? So detached homes, there's only 23 transactions that happened versus the all time high of 77. Even pre, uh, even pre pandemic numbers, 26 homes is very similar. Okay. But if you look on a year to year basis, it actually dropped by 45%. Okay. 42 homes sold in last uh, December, 2021. Now, if you look at active listings, there are less listings on a month to month basis. Only 49 homes are available. But if you look on a yearly basis, it was only 17. Okay. Now, even if you look at the February figures, all time high peaks, there are 78 homes that were available. So there are less homes, detached homes in Aurora now than they were at the height. Okay. And despite that, though, the home prices did start to drop, right? So it was about 1.4 million versus February, which is 1.96 million. Okay. Pre pandemic, right? You know, you're, you're still up by about 34%. Okay. Where the average price back then was about 1 million and 46,000. Now looking at the type of market, right? It's still a seller's market. Okay. It's still a seller's market. So pre pandemic, it was, you know, 3.73. Now it's 2.13. Okay, so it's interesting to note, nobody really wanted a detached home in Aurora pre pandemic, which is why it was more of a bounce market back then versus now. Okay, in terms of how long it's taking to sell a home, 17 days now, the same thing the month before of November. And pre, uh, you know, pre pandemic is, it was actually 42 days. Okay, and um, all time high it was 10 days. Okay. So looking at other asset classes, there are not that many transactions that happened. And I don't want to dive right into that because one transaction could be an anomaly, right? It was a teardown and, you know, the homeowner, the builder was able to sell for a lot, right? So I don't want to give you these numbers because it can be quite um, skewed. But if you really want them, please let me know. I'll be happy to um, send them your way. If you find this information useful, please subscribe, like it, share it, and I'll be happy to help. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.